Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reeder from the biblicalnutritionist.com and today it's all about what are the best and the worst breakfast foods. You know we're gonna go there and yes, be ready, take some notes and be willing to make changes because the more we make changes, the more we get to see our body respond to those changes and how God works. God's foods are always gonna be the most healing because that's how he created the foods to work within us. And so we're gonna talk about that today. Before we get started, please go ahead and check out our website, biblicalnutritionacademy.com. This is where we host all of our courses so you can learn at your own pace, God's recipe for excellent health. And it always includes how much God loves you and how he created your body to be able to have that longevity and that vigor that you were created to have. When it says in John 10, 10, that he created you to have an abundant life, there's a reason why he created the certain foods to feed our life physically. Because just as we're physical, we are spiritual. And just as we are spiritual, we are physical. They are so interconnected that they work together. If you want complete healing in your body, we have to work on the spiritual just as much as the physical. If you're only dealing with the physical, you're not gonna see the healing that you want to have happen. If you're only working on the spiritual, you're gonna have an amazing relationship with him, but we need your body to be able to be healed as well. The ingredients for a good breakfast is gonna have number one, protein, number two, fiber, and last is carbs. You do need some carbs, but we need healthy carbs that God created and designed for us. We don't need the fake foods. Make sure you check out my fake foods video that I created for you but we need real food. And we do not need sugar for breakfast. I know that's a shocker, but you don't need sugar for breakfast to be able to get into your work, get into your school. When my children, when I let them have cereal for breakfast, yeah, they did not do as well as if I gave them eggs and, I, oh, I'm starting to give you away my chips. So be sure and stay tuned as we learn what to eat for breakfast. All right, let's hit the top 10 worst foods for breakfast. Here they are. They are pizza, number one, worst food. Number two, ice cream. Yes, people actually do that for breakfast. And number three is candy. We do not want to start our day with candy. Don't let any wrapper confuse you that it's healthy. It's not. Number four is cereal. I've addressed this so much in the sugar video and in the fake foods video. Go check those two out. Cereals are not a breakfast food. Number five is Pop-Tarts. No nutritional value there. Although I must say, Rhonda Carroll in our inner circle, she teaches people how to make your own Pop-Tarts. So yes, it is possible, but not what you see in front of you. Number six is donuts. Yes, that stands for do not. And so scratch that off your list, unless you make them yourself. We'll talk about that in the 10 best. But if you're buying it in the store, no. Number seven is pancakes. I know that's going to be a shocker, but hold on to that thought because I'm going to share with you how you can actually see that on the worst list and the best list. Number eight is bacon. You knew I was going there. All of the additives that are used to make the bacon, the nitrates, the nitrites, all of that is very carcinogenic. It can be rancid in your body. You don't want that. I know that flavor is amazing, but it's not worth your health. Number nine is sausage. Now this is gonna trip you up a little bit because I'm gonna have sausage on both the worst and the best list, but there's a way to get it in the best way. But if buying it in the store, you don't know what has gone into that sausage to make it that way, and you need to verify that the meat is actually a good quality meat. And number 10, so many of you know what it is. I'm going to kind of do a slash here. So 10 is gonna be a combo, energy drinks and lattes those sugared lattes oh when i did the sugar video for you recently i was so shocked at 48 grams of sugar in those lot in those frozen coffees those that you buy on the shelf energy drinks slash coffee drinks yes that is the 10 worst breakfast foods Now headed to the 10 best breakfast items that you can make for yourself and for your family. Remember that you start your day first before you even think of eating, you start your day with warm water and lemon. 
let that just eight ounces, 12 ounces, I actually do 16 ounces every morning. Let that just get into your system. It resets the pH of your digestive tract, especially your mouth and your mouth needs cleansing in the morning. You may have brushed your teeth, good for you, you should have done that. And then we go to the lemon water to set that pH. We need the right pH so that we have the right enzymes working in the best environment to digest. It's that simple. Lemon water helps cleanse the liver, the kidneys in the morning. They need that and that you need it as well. It will show up as beautiful skin and it will show up as just feeling better. Anytime I go to a restaurant, I start with warm lemon water. I want my pH to be set so I can digest better and metabolize. So once you have started your day with the lemon water, wait about 30 minutes before you even think about eating. I may be delaying your morning, but just consider it on the days that you can do it. I'm not trying to make life difficult. I just wanna give you best options. Now, beyond that, let's look at the 10 best foods for breakfast. Number one is gonna be eggs. If you have some eggs, especially from a farmer, and you can whip them up and add in some spinach, maybe some cabbage, maybe some green peppers, red peppers, they have to be organic because peppers are high on pesticides. And just scramble that up. You can even scramble that up on Sunday, enough for the whole week and refrigerate and just pull it out, warm it up maybe in a toaster oven and enjoy that every single day. That is the number one best breakfast because it's going to give you the protein and it's going to give you good quality essential nutrients such as your vitamins and things like that. And if you add in maybe some flaxseed, you're going to get some fiber with that or you put it on a freshly milled bread that you baked yourself. You've got everything in one package and it's going to be delicious. That's my number one breakfast. I love to serve that to myself and anyone who comes to visit. Number two, I'm just gonna change it up a little bit, it's pancakes. I know I said they were the worst, but now I'm telling you they're the best. And the reason they can be the best is if you get the right pancakes. In my Healthy Treasures cookbook, I have a couple recipes for pancakes. And when I first started switching over from cooking unhealthy to cooking healthy, my son wanted his Aunt Jemima pancakes. Well, Aunt Jemima pancakes are yellow. So all I did was mill some Kamut flour, which gives me the yellow look, and he thought he got his Aunt Jemima pancakes. They tasted better too, and they had the fiber. I give him twice, if not three times the amount of fiber by milling the grain myself. If you haven't yet decided and understood the value of milling your own grains, you might buy pancake mix in the store. If I were to recommend one pancake mix for you, it would be Kodiak. High fiber, high protein, great start to your day. And actually, I was shocked because my daughter and son-in-law, they actually cook pancakes for dinner a lot and their kids love it. My husband was never a breakfast for dinner person, so we've never done that, but maybe your family does. Number three is smoothies. I love my breakfast smoothies. I can put so much into those smoothies. I can get my protein in there, my fiber, my fruits for the day. And I love the fact that my husband will either use a superfood powder, I'll put a link to that down below, or he will actually just grab a handful of spinach or his greens, or sometimes we'll use my dehydrated kale that I have a lot of in my pantry. So we get every food group in one meal. I don't have to worry about how many vegetables my husband gets every day because he does so much in his smoothies. He actually does smoothies for breakfast and for lunch. Smoothies are the best way to get nutrition in for someone who's dealing with cancer, heart disease, any of those health challenges because we get a higher boost of nutrition and they can just sip on it throughout the day. It's so much better to make your own smoothie than it is to be buying the boost or the Ensure. Those are chemical lab experiments. Just avoid them at all costs. Number four is sausage. I know I said it's the worst, but it could be good. What I do is in my Healthy Treasures cookbook, I've given you a recipe for how to make country sausage. Take the best quality meat that you have, that you, you know you trust because you bought it from a trusted source, and then add the seasonings. I do this to make my own sausage for my pizza. And then I add the seasonings. I let that sit and marinate overnight in a bowl and wrap it up. And then by morning, it has the flavors that I want in my sausage. So I make my own sausage. And this works so well, it's actually more economical than buying the sausage already done for you. So yes, you can have sausage for breakfast. Number five is not a food in itself, but it's an ingredient that I want you to add in everything you eat, flax seeds and chia seeds. We definitely can get the digestive system cleaning out. It's already prepped itself overnight. Now give yourself flaxseed and chia seeds. Your hormones will be happy. You'll have less insulin burst, so you'll be good with that. And it's just a perfect start for the day. So seeds, 
chia seeds, flax seeds, even some hemp seeds would be delicious. Number six is freshly milled bread, or even freshly milled Ezekiel bread. I've got videos on both of those. It's not gonna be found in the grocery store. You're going to have to get these grains from a supplier and make it yourself, but your body's gonna say, that's good, and it's gonna treat you well. And so remember, if you go to my website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com, and if you go under blogs, you can type in there where to buy grains, and the blog will come up that tells you exactly where to buy grains. And this is important because so many people ask, what do I do, how do I get started? So go to my Shop the Mills page, watch my videos, you can get, see the mills there. We offer coupons and we offer free courses for those who purchase from our site. And then also go to the blog and look up where to buy grains. That way you can be milling your own breads for breakfast or your own Ezekiel bread for breakfast and get the benefit in your body. Number seven is freshly milled grits. This will blow your mind how good it tastes. I have taught in classes where I made the boxed grits. I made the polenta by Bob's Red Mill and then I ground up corn myself and made grits. And I didn't label it, I just let everyone choose which one they thought, they tasted all three, tell me which one is the best. The box grits, no, no comparison whatsoever, no one liked that. And then I let them make it their own way with butter or with cheese, however you normally eat your grits. The Bob's Red Mill, it got an okay rating, but the freshly milled corn grits was by far the winner in the class. That's what I like to do in my classes. I like to do taste tests. It's amazing what real grits actually taste like. And then when you go back to eating the box grits, you're like, no, this isn't really anything. So I wanna challenge you, get some corn, mill it yourself. You can make it fine or you can make it coarse, however, and then make your own grits. You will never go back to boxed again. Please make sure you are subscribed to this channel because I am coming out with another video on how to make your own cream of wheat. You can do that, it's very simple. And again, just like I said with the grits, it is amazingly more delicious than buying it out of the box. So go ahead, mill your own wheat, make your own cream of wheat, and let your family just enjoy that nourishment that you get by having everything that God put in the grain of wheat into your breakfast. And if you have to eat breakfast on the go or you're not a big breakfast eater, even just eating 10 walnuts or 10 almonds could be a breakfast. Protein, fats, fiber. There you have it, perfect start to the day. You could add a little dollop of yogurt if you want to, but starting with nuts is a good boost to your brain and to your microbiome. Number 10 is avocados. Yes, this is a huge benefit to your body, especially for breakfast. Get everything working well in the morning. Get your brain working well from the healthy fats. Get your digestive system working well from the nutrients that are gonna build your microbiome. You've got the healthy fats, you've got healthy hormones. You've got a balanced blood sugar. Oh, you're gonna be so on target today by starting your day with avocados. Just chop it up on top of some spinach, chop it up, put it on top of your scrambled eggs, chop it up, spread it on your toast. Starting your day with avocados may seem unusual, but let's make it a usual. Well, that wraps up our 10 best breakfasts and our 10 worst as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you and I can be stay connected in the Biblical Nutritionist family. And if you haven't already and you're ready to just dive in and say, I want to understand God's recipe for excellent health so that I can have the health that God has promised, then go to our website, Biblical Nutrition Academy, and then you can see all of the courses that we have for you there. And one of them is actually free and it's my favorite. It's how to celebrate Jesus. And it teaches all of the biblical feast, even the Sabbath, and even has a huge download of recipes, how to make your own challah bread. Check that out while you start investigating the biblical nutritionist. And remember, I am here to help you understand God's love for you. And he teaches you about his love in the foods that he created, foods that you see right behind me here, foods that he created for you to have the wellness that he promised us so that you can live your life abundantly as it teaches us in John 10:10. 10, 10. And remember the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy, not our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior comes to heal because he says, I am the Lord who heals you. Trust him at his word. And thanks for watching. Be sure and hit like, subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time here on The Biblical Nutritionist.